first thing I have to say in this video is that Mick Jagger might just be the best frontman in rock and roll's history. But he always bounds with the contagious, unstoppable relish that is the very essence of rock and roll. Sure, he's past his prime, and there's no dearth of party poopers saying he's too old to be skipping up and down the stage, but honestly, who wouldn't like to be this agile in their 60s or 70s? And why am I talking about Mick Jagger in a Star Wars video? Because the older characters in The Force Awakens are shadows of their former selves, to put it gently. So I needed to remember that growing old is not the same as going downhill. How is it possible that a sequel to the original trilogy could forget this fundamental lesson? Those movies gave us Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda, both of whom were old but also dignified, wise, and quite a spirited if you take into account they were both exiles. Obi-Wan didn't take lip from anybody, and Yoda didn't put up with looks whining. They were solid, challenging mentor figures. Now, the biggest source of discomfort in The Force Awakens was Han Solo. I'm not sad because Han Solo is a different character. It's been 30 years, and that's bound to change anybody. But let's say you grew up with this uncle that you really look up to. Successful, charming, fun, confident, but not too proud most of the time. And last time you saw him, he had the world at his feet. Great job, nice family, loving friends, the works. Then 30 years go by without any communication between you two. You run into each other and this paragon of success and confidence is now a hunched over used car salesman paying alimony to six different ex-wives. Isn't it only natural to ask, what the hell happened? This is a complete 180. It cancels out the transformation of a beloved character. Is an explanation too much to ask for? Yes! Oh, uh, oh okay. Well, we might as well bring Leia into the mix too, because her unfortunate transformation is not that different from Han's. Long gone is the feisty Leia who took charge in the middle of a gunfight. Gone's the Leia who jumped right in the thick of things. Gone's the Leia who raised her voice and didn't sound like a grandma. Gone is the Leia who stood up to Darth Vader and even Java. Instead, we get the Leia who can't keep her own kid under control. Which leads into the matter of Han and Leia's parenting. Han even acts like it's not his fault his son turned bad. There's too much Vader in him. Yeah, nice cop out. This is the man who returned to the Death Star to save Luke who risked his own life on Hoth to rescue Luke, again, who had matured enough to consider stepping out of the way when he believed Leia was in love with Luke. What happened to that man? Leia's not blameless either. She pretty much foisted her son off on Luke when he became too difficult to raise. But at least she has the backbone to accept responsibility. Okay, I'll come clean. I'm not a fan of the idea of turning Han and Leia into beaten down shadows of their former selves, but if the drama associated with that story is up to snuff, I'll give it a try. That won't happen though if I can't see the turning point that brought them from fulfilled, heroic characters to deeply flawed human beings. And don't tell me things change when their son turned evil. That wouldn't have happened if they were good parents. And they'd be good parents if their character hadn't shifted so dramatically for no apparent reason. Finally, there's the chewed up cherry on the half-melted cake, Luke Skywalker. Most of what I said about Han and Leia applies to Luke as well. But at least we don't have it rubbing our faces all the time, because he only turns up at the end of the movie. Well, kind of, he's still a major presence. His name is one of the first things we see in the movie. But there's one fly in the ointment I haven't heard discussed in any other videos. It's the fact that finding Luke Skywalker is not a compelling goal. The idea is that Luke can help set things right. First, part of the reason why things are so bad at present is that Luke and the rest of the old guard dropped the ball so miserably in the last 30 years. So why do they expect things will be any different the second time around? He might screw things up even more. I'll argue that the movie on some level is aware of this. In this scene, Snoke specifies that Luke can become a potential threat to his plans. In the next scene, Han reveals that Luke pretty much went down to the store for cigarettes and never came back. 
Is that what Snoke is afraid of? A guy who ran away? Seriously? With how fast the movie is edited, I didn't notice this the first time around, but now it strikes me as too manipulative. But the second point is the more important one. Luke is not necessary. As I said in the first episode, the scales are tipped in favor of the good guys. They have the upper hand in every major scrap, even when they shouldn't. What can Luke do for them? They have things covered. The only reason the First Order destroyed the Republic is that the good guys didn't get off their asses quickly enough. But when they do, holy moly. Oh, but the galaxy needs more Jedi to fight against the dark side, right? Well, do they? Maybe if the Empire had been commanded by seven dark Jedi like in Dark Forces 2, the computer game, I'd be convinced. But all they have is a cadaverous ghoul and his incompetent tantrum prone apprentice. Oh, but sure the Knights of Ren might be dangerous. Oh, you mean the, the villains who barely appear in the movie? Yeah, I'm shaking. Anybody still thinks Luke is actually necessary? I think the movie's underlying and probably unintentional message is that the universe would be better off without the old guard. Leave things in charge of Poe, Finn and Rey, who can obviously do no wrong, who don't need to grow as characters. They obviously don't need the guidance of balanced, wise and inspiring mentors, because they don't get it anyway. What on earth went wrong? If the best you can do with the original trilogy's heroes is turn them into washed out losers for no substantial and compelling reason, then you didn't work hard enough. But as we'll see in the next episode, coherence and the hard work needed to achieve it wasn't something JJ and his crew seemed too keen on. And as a bonus, you'll get to learn how to weed out insincere friends. See you then.